let's take a look at the builder pattern. All right, we found us back in Tilly once more. And in this video, we're talking about the design pattern, the builder. The builder pattern is a pattern that you will see numerous times, specifically in terms of, well, Minecraft modding, specifically 100%. But also, in game development in general, the builder pattern can be very, very useful. And we're going to see this as on an example over here with sort of an item, an item rarity, and an item component. So let's just start making our classes, and then it will become much clearer on what the builder pattern actually is. And then we'll see. We're going to have an item class. We're going to make a new class that's going to be the item component. This is going to store all of the data that is associated with an item. And I'm going to explain more on that in just a second. And we'll also make an item rarity just so that we have another interesting sort of a component of data for our item. Uh, the enum over here for our item rarity is going to be common. Then we're going to do uncommon. We're going to do rare, legendary. And finally, we're going to do unique just for the sake of argument over here. Just making sure we spell this correctly. There we go. So we have our item rarity ready and we can actually move on to the rest. So let's first and foremost actually make the item because that's going to be super freaking easy. The item in this case literally will just save the an item component. So we're going to have a private final item component. I'm going to call this the item component. And then easy enough, it's going to be a public item. Passing in an item component over here, putting this item component. And then this that item component equals the item component right here. Very straightforward. Later down the line, I'm pretty sure that we could theoretically make this into a record, but for the time being, we're not going to make it a record. We're going to look at the item component. So the first thing here that's quite interesting is that instead of, let's say, putting the durability and the rarity and all of that on the item, we actually have a separate class. This is what's called a higher level of composition. The idea being that item has a item component instead of item is something. And one of the reasons why this might be useful to use is because now if we, let's say, wouldn't make this final just for the sake of argument, then the easiest thing would be to just switch out the item component and all of a sudden we have basically a whole different item. And also, not only that, but also the item component itself, when we actually make this, if we change the item component, the item literally doesn't even care about it, right? The item itself doesn't really know about the item component's internal structure and doesn't need to know about it. But let's just take a look at the item component right here. So we're going to have a private int ID. Now, this is probably going to be always set for, for something like this. But then we also have a private int durability. And then maybe what we're going to have is we're going to have a private Boolean has shine, right? Maybe there's a sort of a shine for our items, right? That's particular... Thing. And then maybe we also have an item rarity. So a private item rarity called rarity. Bada bing, bada boom. Then we're going to make a private constructor. And this private constructor is going to be item component. And let's, for example, say that it doesn't include anything, right? We don't include anything over here. That's totally fine. However, then you might say, well, okay, so the constructor is private. So how am I even going to construct this? Well, this is where the builder comes in. Let's first of all generate the getter methods for all of those, though. So we're going to just right-click generate getter over here for every one of those methods. So I just click on the one of them, hold shift down, and then it selects every one of them over here. So we now have getters for all of them. This is just going to make this a little bit easier. And now we're going to make a class within the class. And you're like, what? Yes. So within this class, we're going to make a public static class. This is the item component builder. Bada bing, bada boom. Look at this. That is totally fine. This will save a private item component. Over here, this is the component. And then how is this going to work? Well, a builder pattern allows you to make a custom class, right? A custom object in this case of the item component variety here. And the cool thing is that you can then basically add all or no or some of the different fields over here. So each one of the fields is going to have a, its own method. First of all, we're going to have a, a builder method that's just going to be accessible. So this is going to be a static over here. And this is the item component builder. So we're going to have the idea of calling the builder method right here, but statically. So we're going to have an item component builder. This is the builder equal to a new item component builder. Then builder.component is simply a new item component. So we're going to make a new item component and then return exactly the builder that we've just made. So the static method over here creates our initial builder. 
sometimes you also see this not being static and you rather just have to make a new item component builder instance in that case either of the approaches works but what makes the builder so cool is that now every time we make a method let's say for an id right we want to return an item component builder over here so item component builder boom we're gonna call this the id method and then int id inside of it we're then going to say this dot component dot id is equal to id so whatever we are passing in over here we're then setting to the component that we have saved in this particular builder and then we're going to return this. So we're just going to return itself over here because on a builder pattern, you can call multiple methods and basically just with that, assign multiple values. So once again, public item component builder durability with an integer durability. And that's going to be this that component that durability equals durability. And then we return once again this. And we do the same thing for both of the other ones. So I'm just going to duplicate this over here or copy it over rather so that we have everything so that's going to be the has shine and then this is the boolean has shine and as easy as has shine and has shine right here boom finally this is going to be the rarity and this is going to be the rarity this is going to be item rarity rarity and we're going to do rarity and finally equal to rarity and one final very important thing is that right now we only have an item component builder but we still need the item component itself and for that there is always a build method so public item component putting this build over here and then we're returning this dot component and bada bing bada boom we have a custom builder made now you might still say okay i still literally don't even what, what, what do we why did we go through all of the trouble to do all of this craziness well maybe not every item component has a shine and the issue is if you want it to properly represent this, right? Obviously, we could also say, okay, there's a public item component over here, right? And then we say, well, okay, now we're going to do one with an ID, right? Because, well, an ID is probably going to be, it's a smart thing to have an ID. And then you say, well, okay, um, I, I, sometimes I might also have to add the durability. And then you'd say, okay, then I'm going to make a durability over here. So this is a second constructor. No worries at all, right? We can make multiple constructors. And then you're like, well, now we are going to have one where we have a, so now we're going to duplicate this again, and we're going to have one where we have the item rarity, right? So we have item rarity, rarity over here. Okay, that's fair. Uh, and then we're going to say, well, now the question is, now I also need another one where we don't only have the item rarity, but also has a shine. So then we're going to say this is a Boolean has shine, and so on and so forth. And if you have like 18 different fields over here, you're going to have, you know, I don't even know, 50 different constructors, unwieldy to the max degree, right? Just doesn't make any sense. And usually when you run into the run, in, run into something where you have to duplicate a lot of code, there is usually a way, a better way to do it. And that would be the builder pattern. Because let's say, for example, okay, sure, we always need an ID, but maybe we don't always need a durability. Let's think about it like this. Yeah, sure, tools need a durability, but, you know, items that stack usually don't have a durability. So we can then simply omit it. So let's take a look over here and let's just make a couple new items. So let's make an item over here. This is the iron ingot, let's say, for the sake of argument. And the iron ingot is going to be a new item. We pass in item component dot item component builder dot builder. This one right here. And then we can call each individual method and simply set it. So we can, for example, say ID is, let's say, 10. And then we call the next method, which is durability. And then you're like, no, 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 wait a second. The iron uh, ingot doesn't have a durability. Okay, sure. So we're just going to say rarity. And we're going to say item rarity is common. And then that's it. After this, we're going to call the build done. Now our iron, iron ingot is done. Iron ingot is made up with a common rarity and an ID of 10. Let's say the next one is going to be the diamond sword here, for example. right? The diamond sword has an ID of 32, let's say. Item rarity is going to be legendary just for the sake of argument. And then you're like, well, wait a second. This also has a durability of 1,200. Easy enough. There you go. And now we've made another item, but additionally with the durability of a 1,200. And then let's say maybe over here we have the master pickaxe. I don't even know. This is going to be 67 over here as its ID. Then we're going to have this is going to be a unique item with durability of, I don't even know, 6,900. And also, why not also has shine true boom and now we have the possibility of basically setting each individual component over here each individual field via a builder 
That is the builder pattern. You're going to see this all throughout, like I said, Minecraft modding, Hightail modding maybe as well. It, it's very likely. But basically, this is the whole idea. And then we can, let's, let's say, for example, output something. So the iron, the items itself, let's just say if we were to output them, let's just give them a string over here, get rarity in, in this instance. Because, of course, within the item itself, I have access to the item component right here, right? So that's totally fine. So I can literally just say return item component dot, let's say, for example, get rarity name over here. We're just going to get the name of the rarity. So we're just going to say get rarity. And we're going to do that for the diamond sword as well as the master pickaxe over here in just this case. And if we were to output all of those, we can see we're going to get common, legendary, unique. So the items themselves save the item component, which was created via the item component builder. Builder patterns, really freaking cool, really freaking useful for many different things. I will link a couple more sort of examples and more reading once again down below for you to take a look at. But I can tell you the builder pattern will definitely come up quite a few times in anywhere where it, uh, where we want a bit of composition over here. And that's going to also conclude this video right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next video. So, yeah.